Hi guys, it's MJ and in this video I'm going to be giving you another lesson on decision theory and this is part three of four and what we're going to be doing in this video is talking about something known as the risk function. Now if you haven't seen the previous two videos, go and watch those first before you attempt this otherwise you might get a little bit confused by the various notation that we're going to be using. Anyway, let's get into this risk function. This is the following formula for the risk function. It's R as a function with two variables. And it's got D and it's got a state, a state of nature. And what this is saying, I mean, we can even say D1, is this is going to be the expectation of the loss function which has two parameters of its own. It has d1 of x, and it has the state of nature. So let's just label everything before we go forward. So like I said over here, this is going to be our state of nature. Okay. The state of nature, d1, well, this L value here is something known as the loss function. This guy over here is the decision function. And so what this risk function is basically telling us, it's saying this is the expected loss from a particular decision um, and a state of nature. So it's the expected loss that we're going to see by following a certain decision um, with a certain state of nature. Now just to have a quick little recap, we're dealing with the following scenario. We're flipping a coin, so we're flipping a coin, and we need to determine, or we need to guess if the coin is fair or if it is unfair. And if we get the decision wrong, we're gonna have a penalty of one pound. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to redraw that matrix and then we're going to move forward from that and look at the risk function. So let me clear all of this here. Let me get the following matrix. We can actually clear this as well. So we have this. This is what our statistician or our player, um, they can make their guess either A1 or A2, and nature can either be in the various states. And for simplicity, I'm going to just be writing them out. So this is when nature is unfair. So this is when the coin is unfair. This is when the coin is fair. This is when we guess that it's unfair. And this is when we guess that it is fair. Which means the payoff matrix is as follows. Remember, it's a one pound penalty if we guess incorrectly and zero if we guess uh, correctly. And remember, these have got the following loss functions of A1 and unfair and A2, 1, A1, state 2, A2, state 2. Okay, so that's what we're dealing with. This is our, our little matrix. Let me maybe, we want to keep that in sight. So let's maybe move that to the top here. Make it a bit smaller. Okay, now we need a little bit more information in order to proceed. And the information that we're told is that we know that one of the sides is heads, okay? So we know that one side is heads. And this is very important because we didn't know, um, remember the previous video, we didn't know um, if both sides of the coin are tails or if both sides of the coin are heads. If we don't know that information, then it is a pure guess and there's no point in actually flipping the coin once and seeing one of the encounters. What we need to do now is, or well, what we've been told now, is that one of the sides is heads. So if we flip the coin and we see its tails, well, then we're going to know that the coin is fair. But the interesting part comes up is if we flip this coin and it's heads, 
then it's almost like a 50-50 whether it's fair or unfair. But is it 50-50? Let's explore this some more. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to denote some sort of probabilities. So if the coin is unfair, okay, so if the coin is unfair and it's this state, we know that the probability that x, now remember, x can either equal 0 if it's heads or x is equals 1 if it's tails, and this is the flip of the coin. So this is the one piece of information we get in order to play our game. Now, x is a random variable, and under this state, x is going to equal 0 or heads when it's unfair. This is going to happen with certainty, so probability of 1, that it becomes heads, and the probability that x is equal to tails has got a 0% chance because it's unfair, so both sides are heads, so it's a 0% chance that we'll get tails. Okay. If, if our coin is fair, so if we're in the second state of nature, in the probability that x is equal to heads and the probability that x is equal to tails, they're both going to be equal to a half. Okay, so if we're seeing heads and if we're seeing tails, it's going to be half-half. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're now going to look at the various decisions that we had in the previous video. And I'm just going to draw them quickly for us on the slide here. So in the previous video, we looked at the various decisions. Decision 1, Decision 2, Decision 3, and Decision 4. And how they were was that if we saw heads, we made a decision. And if we saw tails, we saw a, made a decision. I'm going to denote a tick as it being fair and an X as it being unfair. So that's just going to be my key. Decision one was that if we saw it as a heads, we said it was unfair. But if we saw it was tails, then we thought it was fair. And that's quite a good strategy. Decision two was that we're just going to say it's unfair regardless. And we know that's kind of silly because if it's tails, then it's not going to be unfair. But it's still a decision that we can do. We will eliminate it later. Decision three is no matter what happens, we're going to say that the coin is fair. Again, this is quite a good decision because if it is tails, that, that makes sense. Decision four is, again, a bit of a silly one in the sense that we're going to say it's fair if we see heads and we're going to say it's unfair if we see tails. D2 and D4 are silly, but we are going to just keep them in because remember, the point of this, this video is to show you the notation, show you the theory, and explain the process. So, let's now calculate our risk functions now that we have um, the states and we have our decisions. So what I'm also going to do is also just make this a little bit smaller because it's important that we keep this all on the same page. Okay, so now let's look at our risk function. Okay, so, and this is going to end off the video. So this is the last piece that I'm going to do, and then I'll draw, yeah, I'll do the risk functions, then I'll draw one little last matrix, and I'll leave the rest to video four. So you guys can have a bit of a break. Okay, so let's look at the risk function. When we chose decision one, and the state of nature was one. So this is decision one when it's unfair. Okay, so we're looking at this here. What we're now going to do is we're going to be taking these probabilities and we're going to be multiplying them by our strategy. Okay, so what we're going to do is we have the probability that x is equal to heads. So we're going to have one. Okay, that's where I'm getting the one from. And we're going to multiply this by the payoff, which is zero. Okay, because remember, what we're going to say is if we see heads, we're saying it's unfair. So times zero. Plus, okay, the probability that it is tails, okay, which is zero. Times, if it's tails, we're going to say it's fair. 
So we're going to say it's fair when it's unfair, which means there's going to be a penalty of 1, but the probability of that happening is 0, which means the answer is 0. Okay. Now that might have been a little bit confusing, but don't worry, we're going to do this, we're going to do this 8 times for all the decisions and all the states. I'm going to go through it slowly, and you're going to, you're going to see that it's not that difficult. It is confusing though, so give yourself some patience. Okay, now we're going to do the risk function. Again for decision 1. Remember, this is decision one over here. And now what we're going to be also doing is looking under state two. So we're going to be looking over here. Okay, so what do we have going on? Okay, so state two is when the coin is fair, okay, which means the probability that the coin is heads is going to be a half. I'm getting that value over there. Now, if it's heads, and it's fair. So if it's heads, we're going to say it's unfair, but it is fair, so we're going to have that penalty of 1. Okay? Plus, what we're going to have is the probability that it is tails, which is also going to be a half. Okay? And when it's half, we say that it's going to be fair. It's fair under state 2, which means the payoff is going to be 0. And we see the answer is going to be equal to a half. Okay, you can see it's not too bad, but we're going to do it for a few more. So you're going to see what's happening. So let's look at the, the risk function for D2 um, under state 1. State 1 is that the coin is unfair. And now we're looking at decision 2 which basically says, no matter what, we're just going to say that this coin is unfair. Okay, so we're going to be looking down here. So what happens is that we're going to have 1, which is the probability that it's heads, times the payoff that we say that it's unfair, which is 0, so we made the right choice, plus the probability that it is tails, and the chance that it was, um, that we said it's unfair. So that's also going to be times zero, and we're going to get zero over there. Okay. Now let's look at the risk function for D2 given state two. And now we're looking at the scenario. When the coin is fair. So the probability that the coin comes up heads and is fair times the fact that we're saying that it's unfair means we're going to get this one penalty, okay, plus the probability that it's tails given it's fair times the payoff that we say that it's unfair means we're going to have to be paying um, you know, a fine, because we're saying that it's unfair. And this is going to give us a total payoff of 1. Now, if we kept doing this, I don't want to do them for all of them, because otherwise this video is going to take forever, um, and could actually be a nice exercise for, for you to do. Let me remove these here and just bring them in. Um, so what we're going to do... is the following, okay, this can maybe be a little exercise or something to just see, make sure that you actually know what is going on, is I want you to do these for yourself, D3 given state 2, D4 given state 1, D4 given state 2, okay, I want you to do these for yourself, and I want you to see if you guys can also get the following values. Remember, what you want to do is if it's state 1, okay, this means it's unfair, we're going to be using these probabilities and we're going to multiply them by the payoff matrix that determines on the strategy that we're using, in this case decision 3, which means no matter what, we're going to be saying that the coin is fair. So it's always going to be um, on this side over here. Follow that through for those four. If you don't get them, rewind the video 
and go through it slowly what I did for the first four risk functions. Once you've done that, we're going to end off the video just by drawing one last little matrix and then we'll leave the rest to the final video because what we get is we get state one and we get state two and now our decisions, decision one, decision two, decision three and decision four, this now becomes the, the game. So before we were choosing whether it's unfair or fair, but because our choice depends on that random variable x, which is the flip of the coin, it now becomes a matrix around our decision functions rather than just our guess. And using these values here, we can see it's zero, I'm getting the zero there. It's a half, I'm getting the half there. It's a zero here, we're getting a one there. And for D3, we're getting a one and we're getting a zero. We're getting a one and we're getting a half. And I guess, last thing, last thing I'm gonna do is let's dominate some uh, decisions. Remember what we said? We said decision two was dumb because if we saw tails, we kind of think the, it is gonna be a fair coin. And we see that decision two is dominated by decision one. Zero is less than or equal to zero and a half is less than or equal to one. So we can destroy decision two. Same thing can happen with decision four is again, we were saying that it's unfair if we see a tails, which is dumb because we know that the one side is heads. And this is showing us mathematically that it's also a dumb thing to do. So we can also dominate that decision there. And you can see our matrix is actually becoming quite nice and simple. But I'm going to speak about the rest and how to make your decision on this yellow matrix in the next video. I'm also going to be talking about decision criteria, uh, particularly the min-max criteria that we spoke about in video one. And I'm going to be introducing the Bayes criteria, which is really cool. So stay tuned for video four. Good luck.